today we want to talk about a real important case that's going up in front of the United States Supreme Court. Um, it is called Sackett, right? So I'll give you that. And it's regarding this property, this red, uh, red outline property. This is in Idaho. It's 0.67 acres, so two-thirds of an acre near a lake. And then intervening is this other a road and other residential development. This is so important because it deals with what is a wetland, what bodies of water are considered a wetland and under federal jurisdiction and therefore require a permit to build on it from the EPA or some other agency. In this case, the Sackett family um, wants to build a house on this lot and they were issued a citation from the government because they put fill dirt in for the property so that they could put their house in and not have any water standing around. And the government said, no, you violated the uh, federal law because this is a wetland, it's protected, and you have to have a permit, and we're not going to give you a permit. And the, the legal problem then is pretty obvious. The, the courts are trying to figure out what water constitutes waters of the United States. That's the legal, legal issue. What waters are waters of the United States? Is it every low-lying mud puddle that might drain into the Mississippi River eventually? Or is it something much different than that? And so this case is, a, is revisiting a prior Supreme Court case that was decided on a 4-1-4 vote. So a very unclear vote and a very unclear set of reasoning with a lot of lawyer words like reasonable and that kind of a thing and close and proximity and uh, traditionally associated with a navigable water, right? So there's an old saying I, I heard one time uh, about the weather that would put this in context. And the, the saying is, if a butterfly flaps its wings in China, does that affect the weather in America? And that's kind of what we're talking about here. So if you got a little bit of water on a little piece of land, that's not even maybe water, it's just a low depression area that's being filled in, is that affecting the waters of the United States, which is really like, for us, the Ohio River, Lake Michigan, um, the Wabash River, maybe things like that that are navigable, traditionally navigable. And um, if it's navigable, then it requires a federal permit. You can't build on it. You can't do anything on it without the right permits. So you got to be very careful. And there's a, uh, we, we call it bugs and birds and bunnies, right? If a bug or a bird or a bunny drops their foot in it, is it a federal wetland because they um, traverse there, they drink the water, it's part of the food that they eat is grown, you know, grows out of the water, and then something bigger eats the bug, the bird eats the bug, and the, you know, the eagle eats the bunny, right? So it just goes in this giant circle of how, how far does that legal jurisdiction expand, uh, extend and um, once you figure that out, then you got to have federal control over every wetland. And again, I might say that, you know, there's, there's been a lot of litigation on this, and the federal agencies are constantly under attack. You know, the law is expanding and contracting how far their authority goes and how, how many uh, species and endangered species and whatnot are covered by something. Uh, there was a recent case whether a fish means a fish or does it mean a, a bird, right? Or does a, a shrimp equal the same thing as a whale in the context of environmental law, right? So how, how, how far do we expand these different things? And what fits the definition? And then how to interpret the definition becomes uh, exceptionally important. 
And, uh, you know, I'll just give you a, a little bit of a quote here. Uh, there was a holding in the earlier case wetlands are not subject to federal regulation unless they have a continuous surface connection with a relatively permanent body of water that flows into a traditional navigable water, right? And one of the justices wanted a, quote, significant nexus between those two things. Tell me what any of that means. Another jurist on the Supreme Court wanted a different test, and they wanted to say, well, it's a, nav it's a, it's a federal wetland if it significantly, what's that mean? Significantly affects the chemical, physical, biological integrity of a traditional navigable water such that a significant nexus exists between them. So you can see how open to interpretation these different things can be and um, it has a, an enormous impact on all real estate development everywhere in America. So I want you to be aware of it. The Sackett case, it's coming up. It may be decided here this spring. We'll get an opinion on it, but I want you to know about it, listen for it, and you'll know what the issue is. That's it for today. Thank you so much.